to the war in Ukraine, where Russia appears to be moving closer to taking the besieged city of Mariupol. Today, a Ukrainian commander there warned that they may only survive, he said, for days or even hours. The latest assessment by the Ministry of Defence here shows that phase two of the war is well underway. Strikes are still going on around Kyiv and Lviv, but Russia is concentrating its forces and firepower in the south and east, from Kharkiv to Donbass and around to the north of Crimea. But the biggest battle is centred on Mariupol, where what remains of the Ukrainian resistance is holed up and steel works, as Garrett Vincent reports. When they come to write the history of 21st century warfare, there will surely be a long, dark chapter called Mariupol. And this is where the story of the battle will most likely come to an end. Russian state television flies a drone over the ruins of a steelworks on the edge of the city, the place where Ukrainian defenders are making their last stand. And from somewhere underneath the bombed-out workshops, one of their commanders says there'll be no surrender. This is our statement to the world. It may be our last statement. We might have only a few days or even hours left. The enemy's units are ten times larger than ours. They have supremacy in the air, artillery, and units that are dislocated on the ground, equipment and tanks. We appeal to the world leaders to help us. There are hundreds of civilians, some of them families of the fighters, who've been hiding, trapped in the tunnels underneath the factory. Food is short here now, but there's plenty of fear. We try not to be nervous, says this little girl, but when the shooting happens, Everything around us shakes. Above ground, another Russian channel records soldiers getting closer to the victory they soon expect. They shout happy messages to their hometowns. And back in Moscow, their commander-in-chief celebrates the launch of a new intercontinental ballistic missile. A weapon which, says President Putin, will make those who threaten our country think twice. At a press conference in Kiev this evening, meanwhile, Ukraine's president made another plea to the rest of Europe for the heavy weaponry he needs to defend his cities. The Russian army says Mr Zelensky is blocking efforts to organize humanitarian corridors along which civilians might escape Mariupol. These buses sent to help with evacuation were parked up idle outside the city tonight. Its fall would be a strategic victory in this 21st century war, but it's been achieved with some age-old tactics, bombardment and siege. Russia will take its prize, and Mariupol has paid the terrible price. Geraint Vincent, ITV News. Well, while the Russians may have withdrawn from parts of Ukraine they once occupied, the threat they pose has certainly not. Retreating forces have left behind thousands of unexploded bombs and booby traps which continue to kill and injure civilians. Getting rid of them is dangerous work. Three Ukrainian bomb disposal experts were killed at the weekend. Peter Smith joined those teams trying to make communities safe once again. Where there were Russian troops, there remains the deadly threat from weapons left in their wake. Thousands of landmines and unexploded bombs are scattered around towns and villages that were occupied. We're taken to see one spot, a former Russian ammunition hub. Every step must be taken with care. This is right in the middle of the village of Bervitsa, and the entire location is still being swept. Our units alone have already disposed of 15,000 explosive objects. That's artillery ammunition, cluster elements, rockets. It's the full arsenal that Russians used on the battlefield, and it remains on our land. Our duty is to make sure our people feel safe. All kinds of killing machines from Putin's troops are still being discovered. The colonel shows me these. Flechettes, he found. Tiny metal darts. He tells me they've been carefully crafted to kill as many people as possible. What we're seeing is that even in the areas where Russians have retreated or been defeated, 
there is still a danger for the Ukrainian people who live here. Everything that's found needs to be diffused and taken away to be destroyed. Just this one spot in this one village alone will take a week to make safe again. But some bombs have been deliberately hidden. Sviatoslav was killed by a booby trap in his home. We've come on the day of his funeral. He was 39 years old, a lawyer with a wife and a four-year-old daughter. <laughs> Graveside, his mother is consoled by her cousin, a doctor who's been treating victims of this war. Now it's his family. Every day we bury someone. Every day. People are panicking. They still feel haunted, they're scared, and they can't even get back to the lives they used to have. They still can't return to their normal lives. Russian soldiers have left the village, but this is their legacy. Another Ukrainian mother must bury her child. Peter Smith, ITV News, Bervitsa.